Okay, this is part two um, in reference to the law. Okay, um, you know, they say it's common sense to know that, you know, it should be a sin if you, you know, um, you get a tattoo or anything like that. You know, they say, well, you know, you don't suppose to cut on a body or mark on it. You know, that's a sin. Well, first of all, you got to understand that it was a law written first before you even knew it was a sin. Okay, let's go to Leviticus chapter 19. And um, let's read verse 28. It says, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. So first of all, people would get tattoos. You know how when somebody died, they'd be like, you know, they put R.I.P. Rest in peace, and maybe they would get the pit, the, the picture, or you know, the image of the person on their arm or wherever. Okay, and that's that was the main thing of uh, you know, of drawings or tattoos, even in the Bible times. That's the that's the origin of it. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead no print any marks upon you i am the lord so you don't even get you don't suppose to you know put um any type of marks or anything on the body at all okay um th this is the this is the word this is the actual law that was written okay there's nothing in the new testament that wasn't written in the old testament okay so let me just make that clear because what I'm going to show um, in the latter part of this, this study that when it says, you know, in Matthew 5.17, I'm going to go there and it says, think not that I come to destroy this. Christ said, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come to fulfill. And people believe when it says, when Christ says, I come to fulfill, it's talking about fulfilling everything in the law. So it's done away with. I, you know, Christ died for it. We're done. It's okay. But I'm going to explain what it's talking about. Okay. Because that would make the, that, that would actually make the scriptures contradict itself. That's the wrong interpretation. All right. Matter of fact, let me, let me hit on that right now. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 3. Okay, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 3. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 3 says, And it shall come to pass that um, when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his visions uh, when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet. I'm just talking about Christ. I am no prophet. I am a husband man. Okay. Now, when you read in Matthew, he, he will say that he's a husband man. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. That was Joseph. And one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thy hand? And he shall say, answer, and he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So we understand that he's talking about his disciples. This is Zechariah prophesying about Christ. All right. So I wanted to read that so you can understand that Christ was prophesied in the Old Testament to come in the latter days. All right. Let's go to Matthew's. Matthew chapter 3, and I'm going to start at the third verse. Okay. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his, his path straight. 
All right. Now, let's go into what Isaiah said about Christ. Because Isaiah is a prophet, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 through 5. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 through 5. It says, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. So we, we, we're we reading in Isaiah, the Old Testament, about Christ being prophesied to come in the later days. Make straight in, in the desert a highway for our God. And this shows that Christ is God as well. All right. For verily shall... Um, excuse me for uh, excuse me. every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain the, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it this is talking about Christ again coming out into you know coming in later days to fulfill Isaiah's prophecy all right now let's go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 and this is the scripture that they use to say it's okay to eat whatever you want or the law is done away with think not that I come to destroy the law Think not that I come to destroy. Don't even think it one time in your head that he's come to destroy the laws that God gave Moses, the Ten Commandments, uh, the Levitical law. Uh, none of it. None, none of it. Even the prophets. Let's read it. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And then when they see the word fulfill, you have people that interpret that. They say, well, okay, he's fulfilled the law. But it, think about it. You can't fulfill anything with, without an ED at the end of the word. It's, he's come to, to fulfill. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Not everything's fulfilled. Now, how did he fulfill the law? We just read in Isaiah chapter, um, in, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 through 5, how he come and he's, he's being paid. When we read in Matthew chapter 3 and 3, for this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So we clarified in Isaiah 40 and 3 through 5 that Christ was being prophesied. That's why he says he's not come to destroy but to fulfill. He's fulfilling his prophecy. And there's other scriptures that I'm going to go into. Alright. And it says, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Then it says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jolt or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All is not fulfilled like it has an ED at the end of the word this time. But it didn't have an ED at the end of the word for fulfill as we read in verse 17. All right. So let's go to another scripture. I have a plethora of scriptures here. Um, let's, let's go to... Um, and I'm going to just stay in Matthews for a minute. One moment. Yeah. Let's go to Matthews chapter 8 verse 17. 
Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 reads that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness right he's bearing our sickness let's go to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and 5 Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and 5 So you have to use the precepts to understand what the word is saying. Don't just take one scripture and run with it and make a doctrine. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and 5 reads, Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions now what is a transgression in first john chapter 3 i'll read it to you okay I will, I will, i'm gonna make a circle back to that he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed so we understand that christ died for our sins and by his stripes of course that we are healed and he bore our iniquity. So we don't have to sacrifice a lamb or anything like that in the old covenant. But you still have to follow the actual sacrifice after. They still follow the law after you after they sacrificed the lamb in the old covenant. They didn't go back into sin. They sacrificed it. Boom, they were done with it. And they repent they repented, which was that act of repentance. They sacrificed a pigeon or a dove or or a, a, a lamb without without blemish um so they didn't go back into a sin so why in these days we believe that it's okay to do whatever we want they still followed the law so christ died for our sins he is our actual lamb the the, the true lamb the, without spot or blemish and that means we still have to follow it just like they followed then okay um look out for part three